friends, if you do not have the opportunity to read the tragedy of William Shakespeare's Hamlet. Watch this video. This is a story of revenge and not only. Full title, The Tragic Histoire of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. Shakespeare wrote the play at the beginning of the 17th century. Events take place somewhere in Denmark. The play consists of five acts. So, the city of Alsenor. Imagine the area in front of the castle. Midnight. Guard officers are Bernardo and Marcellus. Horatio approaches them. This is a scientist, a friend of Prince Hamlet. Horatio came to check the rumors that the shadow of the murdered king, the father of Hamlet, appeared in the night. Horatio did not believe in this nonsense, but he came. By the way, the name of the murdered king is also Hamlet. A ghost appeared very soon. Horatio recognized him as king. He tried to talk to him, but the ghost was silent, and then he left. Horatio told Marcellus how the king became king. Once the Norwegian king Fortinbras summoned the Danish king, the Danish king defeated, and after that all the lands of Fortinbras were ceded to King Hamlet. Only here the son of Fortinbras, by the way, also Fortinbras, gathered a detachment of Norwegians to return these lands. That a ghost appeared, said Horatio, is no accident. Looks like something is not good. I will tell Hamlet about him. Maybe the ghost will talk to him. In the castle, the new king, Claudius, said at the meeting that he had married the widow of the deceased king, who was his brother. He also gives instructions to take a letter to the Norwegian king, Uncle Fortinbras, in which he wrote about the aggression of his nephew. Son Grandi Polonia Larte asked permission from the king to return to France. After all, he came to the coronation and now wants to leave. The king has allowed. Hamlet was also here. He was darker than a cloud. The same cannot be said about his mother, Queen Gertrude. She had already forgotten about the death of her husband, now she had a new husband. Hamlet, stop grieving, said the king. Very commendable, but enough. Please stay with us, no need to return to Germany to study. The queen also asked her son to stay. Hamlet agreed. When he stayed alone, he began to think that his mother had acted very badly when she married so soon. Just a month after the death of the king, Horatio approached Hamlet. I saw your father at night. My father? At night? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And Horatio told everything. Then Hamlet said that he would also be on guard tonight to see his father. And he asked Horatio and the guards not to tell anyone about all this. Meanwhile, Laertes, leaving, gave instructions to his sister Ophelia. He said that she would not let Hamlet to her, who was flirting with her. Their father Polonia said the same thing to daughter. At midnight, Hamlet, Horatio, and the guard Marcellus stood where the ghost appeared. And soon he appeared. Father, tell me why you came to us, the prince asked. The ghost beckoned Hamlet behind him to say something in private. The guys discouraged the prince to go after the ghost, but Hamlet still went. So, son, I was killed. You must avenge me. Clear, killed. Killed. The official version, I was stung by a snake sleeping in the garden. But the real snake is my brother, your uncle. When I was sleeping, he poured the juice of henbane in my ear. So, my son, avenge me. Only mother do not touch. Getting light. The ghost said goodbye and left. Horatio and Marcellus approached Hamlet. Guys, there is a request. About what happened here today, not a word to anyone. Good. We will keep silence. Royal Counselor Polonius gives the servant a letter and money for the son of Laertes. Go to Paris, find out how my son is doing. Just so that he does not know about you. In general, watch him. The servant leaves, daughter Ophelia appears. She says she just saw Hamlet. Father, he's some weird. Like a psycho. I'm scared. Probably crazy out of love for you. 
I'll tell the king. Meanwhile, the king and queen called the former friends of Hamlet Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Guys, said the king, lately something has happened to Hamlet, he has become strange. Please ask him what is going on. Maybe we can help him. The boys leave, Polonius appears. He tells the king that he knows the reason for Hamlet's strange behavior. This is from love. He is in love with my Ophelia, but she does not accept his love. Meanwhile, ambassadors returned from Norway. They said that the king took control of the situation, that Fortinbras is no longer dangerous. They are now going to go to war in Poland. Wow with someone to fight them. The ambassadors left, Polonius took out Hamlet's love letter, which Ophelia gave him, and read to the king. To see for ourselves, we will arrange a date for them, while we hide ourselves and overhear everything," suggested Polonius. Friends, now I will tell you something that is unlikely to be told at school. In general, further Polonius meets Hamlet, who is aimlessly walking the castle. He asked the prince if he would recognize him. Yes, you are a fish merchant, Hamlet replies. And where is the fish merchant here? After all, Polonius is a nobleman. But everything falls into place if you take the original of the play. The word fishmonger is written there. The fact is that in the time of Shakespeare this word meant pseudonym. Thus, Hamlet was in person Polonius said that he was a pseudonym. Now let's think about why Ophelia abruptly began to reject Hamlet's advances. Because before the wedding of the new king she didn't reject him. The fact is that Hamlet is now out of work. He used to be the heir, and therefore the future king, and now he is nobody. And such a poor guy Ophelia is not needed. Polonius understands this, which is now strongly advises Ophelia meetings with Hamlet. And before that he did not. It turns out that Ophelia is not an innocent creature, but a pragmatic girl. Okay, friends, back to the play. Rosencrantz and Gildan's turn walk up to Hamlet. He is glad to see old friends, and at the same time surprised. Guys, what have you forgotten in this hole? Why did you come here, on a visit? Yourself? Without coercion? To visit? Oh well. Yes, you are right. We were sent to you by the king and queen. The guys added that they saw actors on their way who were traveling to Elsinore. Hamlet is interested. When the actors arrived, Hamlet joyfully met them. He agreed that tomorrow the actors would play one passage about the murder. And if the actors will slightly change the words to those that Hamlet will give them. Okay, we will. Hamlet remained himself. He thinks that he behaves like a woman. After all, cannot avenge the death of his father. He decides that the actors tomorrow before the king will play the scene of the murder of his father, and he will look after the reaction of his uncle and then he will understand everything. Whether the uncle is guilty or not. Because 100% did not trust the words of the ghost. After all, the ghost could be the devil's messenger. We needed evidence. The next day, in the castle, the king asks Rosencrantz and Guildenstern if they knew anything about Hamlet. No, he is silent. But then the actors arrived. Hamlet was very happy with them. They will give a performance tonight. The guys are gone. The king tells the queen that Hamlet will meet with Ophelia here soon, and then they will probably know better what the prince has in mind. Only Ophelia remains. And then Hamlet appears with his famous monologue to be or not to be, that is the question. He thinks what to do next. He is so unsure of himself that he constantly doubts. He thinks whether to leave everything to him as it is, or to gain courage and revenge on the king, or it may be better to die and then everything will not matter. And here Ophelia appears. Hamlet tells her to go to the monastery so as not to give birth to sinners. Or marry a fool. A smart man will not look at you. Hamlet leaves. Ophelia stands and does not understand what it was just. 
he must be crazy. But before she loved me so much, she thought, the king and Polonius, who heard the conversation between Hamlet and Ophelia, come up. What love is there, says the king, Hamlet has something else in his head, and he is not crazy. Okay. Out of harm's way, I will send him to England. Collect tribute. Polonius says that after the performance of the actors he will arrange a meeting of the prince and the queen, and then he will overhear their conversation. He is still convinced that Hamlet is like this because of unrequited love. A little later, Hamlet tells the actors how they need to play in the evening performance. Then he calls Horatio and tells him during the performance to closely monitor the reaction of the king. I'll watch too. Then share impressions. The performance begins. Everybody came, the king, the queen, Polonius, Ophelia and others. Actors play the scene with the poisoning of the king. Hamlet always comments on what is happening on the stage. The king feels bad. All diverge, except for Hamlet and Horatio. They are convinced of the guilt of the king. Polonius came, said, that the queen calls Hamlet. Meanwhile, the king tells Rosencrantz and Guildenstern that he will send Hamlet along with them to England with an important letter. The guys leave, Polonius comes to the king. Hamlet went to the queen, he says. I'll go over the carpet to eavesdrop on their conversation. The king remained himself. He began to think about his sin, fratricide. He knelt down and began to pray. At this time, Hamlet, who was walking toward his mother, passed by. He thought he could kill the king now. No, somehow it is not good during prayer. I will kill him another time, the prince decided. In her bedroom the queen communicates with Polonius. Then he hides behind the carpet. Hamlet enters, Mom, what happened? Why are you insulting your father? Why did you insult your father? You're cocky. What is? The queen was frightened, she thought that her son was ready to stab her now. Polonius immediately called the guard from behind the carpet. And then Hamlet snatched his sword and pierced the carpet, and with him the one who stood behind him. Friends, you will be told at school that Hamlet thought that the king was behind the carpet. That he wanted to kill the king, but it turned out that he killed Polonius. But, we remember that when Hamlet went to his mother, he saw the praying king and then he could have killed him, but he did not. And it is very doubtful that while Hamlet was talking to his mother, the king quietly entered her bedroom and stood behind the carpet. And suddenly Hamlet sharply wanted to kill him. It's somehow illogical. In general, think for yourself what Hamlet was thinking about. Hamlet told his mother everything he thought about her deed. And then the ghost reappeared. That's just the queen did not see him. While Hamlet was talking to a ghost, the mother thought her son was completely crazy. Son, you take it easier with your mother, said the ghost. Enough. Well, okay. Mom, king sent me to England. Probably want to kill. But nothing, I'm ready for this. Let's see who is who. Hamlet calms down and leaves. With him, he takes the body of Polonius. The queen tells the king about the meeting with Hamlet. Well, at least he hasn't killed us yet. Send him to England. The king ordered Rosencrantz and Gildan's turn to deal with the corpse of Polonius. The guys went to Hamlet and returned. We did not find the corpse, the prince had already buried it somewhere. The king called Hamlet. Where is Polonius, at dinner? Only he does not eat, and eat it. Where is Polonius, the king asked again. In heaven, clear. Go to England, immediately, damn prankster. Hamlet is gone. The king gives Rosencrantz and Gildan's turn a letter and orders them to follow Hamlet everywhere. In that letter, an order to kill Hamlet. Meanwhile, a Norwegian military detachment led by Fortinbras was marching across Denmark, to Poland. Hamlet explained that all because of a small piece of land. What? And for this piece of war? 
I do not understand, said Hamlet. And then he thought. After all, Fortinbras had a purpose to which he was going. And he himself had no purpose. And in the castle Horatio tells the queen about the health of Ophelia. She is very bad. He worries about the death of his father, says some nonsense. Ophelia enters. The king and queen cannot understand anything of what she says. Ophelia leaves. The king tells the queen that the son of Polonius Laertes is back from Paris. The guy believes the rumors that the king is guilty of the death of his father. Ordinary people support him, they want to see him as their king. And here comes the armed Laertes, followed by the people. Who killed my father, he asks immediately. It's not me, the king replies. The insane Ophelia enters. Laertes looks at her sister with a pain in heart. Meanwhile, for Horatio bring a letter from Hamlet. The prince wrote that at sea, when they sailed, they were attacked by pirates. During the battle, he was the only prisoner of pirates. He was treated properly. Hamlet asked Horatio to hurry to him and pass the attached letters to the king. King alone told Laertes about the death of his father. Understand, Hamlet wanted to kill me, but he killed your father. I would have executed him, but the people love the prince. Therefore I sent him to England. Two letters are brought to the king, one to him, the other to the queen. The king reads his letter, this is me, Hamlet. I returned. Wait tomorrow, Laertes, do you want to avenge the death of your father? The king asked. Want? Well, go ahead. You know what to do. I heard you fence well. Laertes promised to deal with Hamlet. And in addition, the sword blade smears poison. A small scratch would be enough for Hamlet to die. The queen runs in and reports that Ophelia drowned, walked near the river and accidentally fell. Two gravediggers communicate at the cemetery. They dig a hole for Ophelia. They are approached by Hamlet and Horatio. The gravedigger throws someone's skull out of the ground. Hamlet picks it up. But once this man had a tongue, he could sing. Maybe he was an influential person. Hamlet asked for whom the gravedigger digs a hole. For a person who used to be a woman. The gravedigger showed Hamlet the skull of Yorick, the former royal buffoon. I knew him, said Hamlet, taking the skull in his hands. Witty was a guy. He dragged me on his back when I was a boy. A funeral procession appeared in the distance. Hamlet and Horatio stepped aside to observe imperceptibly. Walked the king, queen, Laertes, retinue. In front of them they carried the coffin with Ophelia. Judging by how it all happened, they carried the body of a suicide. The guys did not know that in the coffin of Ophelia. The priest said that if the king had not intervened, Ophelia, as a suicide, would have been buried in an uninitiated place. And then Hamlet realized who they were talking about. Laertes jumped into the grave for the last time to hug his sister. And Hamlet jumped in the same place. The fight began. They were separated. Hamlet said he loved Ophelia like no other. All gone. A little later, in the castle, Hamlet told Horatio how he secretly took the letter from Rosencrantz and Gildan's turn on the ship, which they were carrying to England. I broke the seal and read that I need to be executed, because I am a danger to Denmark and England. So, what is next? asked Horatio. I wrote another letter. Beautiful handwriting. I had my father's royal seal with me. I wrote to the applicants of the letter killed on the spot. I have a great idea. And the next day, the pirates overtook us. What happened next? You know. And, by the way, in vain I quarreled with Laertes. But I was so enraged that he jumped into the grave. We must make peace with him. From the king came the man. He asked to convey that the king put the money to win Hamlet in a battle with Laertes. Hamlet reluctantly agrees to fight. Soon the king, queen, Laertes and others appear. 
Please forgive me, I was wrong, said Hamlet to Laertes. It was not me, it was my muddled mind. I would like to forgive you, but I cannot. To fight, answered Laertes. The guys gave the rapier. The king ordered a poisoned goblet of wine for Hamlet in case the prince wanted to drink. The battle has begun. The queen wanted to drink. She took the poisoned cup and drank it. The king did not have time to stop her. In the battle Laertes with a poisoned rapier wounds Hamlet, then they change weapons. And Hamlet injures Laertes. The queen falls and before death she has time to tell her son that the wine was poisoned. Laertes confirms that all this was the plan of the king. And now both Hamlet and Laertes himself will die in half an hour, as they were wounded by poisoned rapiers. Damn, said Hamlet and stabbed the king with a poisoned rapier. The king is dying. Then Laertes dies. Hamlet, dying, asks Horatio to tell everyone his story. It was heard on the street someone shot. Hamlet was told that this Fortinbras is returning from Poland with a victory. Then Hamlet has time to say that he wants Fortinbras to be the next king, and he dies. Fortinbras and English ambassadors enter the castle. We came to tell the king that his request was fulfilled, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern were executed, the ambassadors said. Horatio says he will tell the true story of what happened in the Danish kingdom. All right, tell me, said Fortinbras. It will be interesting to me. After all, now I am a contender for this kingdom. He orders to bury Hamlet with honors as a warrior. That's the story, friends.